Now, up until this point, um, we have learned on a sort of basic level how information flows through um, through an accounting system. So from the point that we have the transaction source document to the point that it actually ends up in the financial statements. And the purpose of this video is I want to clarify um, which flow of information is important for us to be able to understand what it is we do when it gets to the topic of adjustments. So as a starting point, okay, all of our transactions have some sort of source document. So a source document would be like a, um, a receipt, an invoice, etc. But something that gives us information of the accounting transaction that the business has entered into. Then the information on these source docs gets posted to the journal. So either the general journal or one of the uh, specialized journals, whatever the case may be. From the journal, this information then gets posted to the ledger. Okay, so it will get posted into the general ledger. And the nice thing about the general ledger is with the general ledger, we have all of our different accounts and we can keep track of what the amounts are that are sitting in that account at any particular point in time. Now, when it comes to preparing financial statements, it's all good and well that we have all this information in the ledger, but we actually need to extract this information as a starting point to help us prepare our financial statements. So as a starting point, what we're going to do is we're going to extract a pre adjustment trial balance. Now, a trial balance is just a list of all the accounts that's sitting in the general ledger. And this pre-adjustment part, what this is alluding to, it's alluding to the fact that we're just taking all of the accounts, the summary information as is, and we're just going to look at what currently is sitting in all of our accounts. Then, once we have that pre-adjustment trial balance, we're actually going to use it to start processing some of our adjustments, okay? Because perhaps there are certain non-routine transactions that the business has entered into that is not currently reflected in the accounting system, so we need to then go and process these adjustments. And these adjustments, really, we are going to process in the form of journal entries, which again get posted to the ledger. Okay, but after we've gone through this process, we can then extract a, a post adjustment pre closing okay, trial balance. And the reason why we want a post adjustment pre closing is because at this point we are going to prepare our income statement. So, on our income statement, we have all of our incomes and our um, expenses. So, the reason why we want this pre closing one is because it means that our income and our expenses have not yet been closed off. Okay. Also, um, it is the post-adjustment trial balance because this means that we have correctly, um, we, we fixed all of our income, um, expenses, assets, etc. We have them reflected at the correct amounts. Now that we have prepared our income statement, the next thing we can do is we can go and process our closing journal entries and our closing journal entries are basically going to close off the income and the expenses to the various equity um, reserves okay um, we also close off things like our drawings which is going to get closed off to our retained earnings but the idea is that um, there are certain accounts that are not going to be reflected on our statement of financial position and we need to um, then close off those accounts um, to the, the the relevant equity reserves. So once we have our closing journal entries, okay, again, we're going to process these journal entries. They would end up in the ledger again, and then we would extract a, another trial balance. And this trial balance we call the post-closing uh, 
trial balance. And with the post-closing trial balance, the only thing sitting on here would be our assets, our equity, and our liabilities. We don't have any income and expenses because those have already been uh, closed off. Now that we have a post-closing trial balance, we can go and prepare our statement of financial position, right? And our statement of financial position is basically a summary of these assets, equity, and liabilities. Okay, after we've done uh, the statement of financial position, of course, we can, um, we can go and prepare our other... Um, our other financial statements. So for example, we can go and do the statement of comprehensive, uh, sorry, the statement of changes in equity. And we can also do the statement of cash flows. Okay, but those are really um, ancillary. I think important to this process over here is understanding when we can do our income statement and when we can do our statement of financial position. And also understanding the importance of the different trial balances that we are that we're extracting at different points right so it's very important that you understand what each of these trial balances are and at which point in this um, system they actually appear okay i hope that video was useful for you and i will see you in the next one bye bye